everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Your Way with No Way. My name is No Way. And today I have a very interesting guest with a very interesting hobby that I'm very excited to talk about. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is something a lot of you might have noticed in a lot of things that are part of our daily lives that make things more beautiful. And today speaking with me is Wendy, also known as Letterholic Calligraphy. And she is a calligraphy artist, or what would be the term? Oh, it would be calligrapher. A calligrapher. Okay, my bad. Calligraphy artist is okay, too, but it's a little long. So we usually uh, identify ourselves as calligrapher. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you uh, for correcting me. So, Wendy, if you want to introduce yourself a little. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Wendy. No way said. Uh, I'm currently living in Orlando, Florida. Um, I've been doing calligraphy for a while now, and I uh, actually planning to launch my own calligraphy business. Uh, with the name is Letterholic Calligraphy. So, if you need any calligraphy uh, needs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I guess uh, this is my first. Always my first question. Um. So, how did calligraphy for you start where did this um, interest in calligraphy start uh it it started a long time ago actually um so go all the way back in uh first grade so oh, uh, oh. one thing about me is i was born in great uh, and uh, raised in vietnam okay uh so uh I moved to the state uh, around 10 years ago from college. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I moved back to Vietnam. It's a whole other story. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so in Vietnam, uh, back in where, when I grew up, um, first grade, you have to start writing with a fountain pen. So the first semester with a first grade, you, you're learning like all the alphabet in pencil. But starting the second semester, everybody has to write with a fountain pen. It's mandatory oh, wow. for the whole uh, elementary to write with fountain pen. And we have like different competitions to see who have like the best handwriting. So like the neat, um, you know, like the best looking notebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. that. Uh, so that's how I started with like writing fountain pen. And I was, I was like, always have to be like, okay, my notebook has to be the prettiest. My handwriting has to be like the nicest. So I always learn all the cursive and writing with a fountain pen mm -hmm. uh but then when you get to middle school uh we don't have to wear with, uh, write with our fountain pens anymore so that just like died out a little bit but then uh it's still inside me that like i like seeing my handwriting pretty i want to <laughs> see like on the notebook super nice like uh -huh. if i write something in class that like ugly and i don't like it i just like get a new notebook and rewrite it into higher thing even if it's just like literature or anything i don't care <laughs> every oh, wow. higher thing with just like nicely and neat and writing and it uh it's something that you can do in class like what when i don't want to pay attention to the teacher i'm just like ah this is boring i just like doodling and writing my friend's name and decorating it early, <laughs> you know because the teacher don't suspect anything when you're writing <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm just writing my friend's name, decorating, and just give it to them uh, after, like, class. And they seem really happy. You know, when you receive something, like, personalized, have your name writing nice and pretty, you just feel, like, mm -hmm. warm and fuzzy inside, kind of like that. Yeah. So I think my friend receiving that, I really like it. So I keep doing um, that. Uh, but it's just, like, uh, something to kill, uh, like, a hobby. To kill time i never thought something like serious about it honestly mm -hmm. back in the day i didn't even know it was called calligraphy i just think that it looks nice and pretty so i just do it uh and then when i went to college in the state i joined different clubs and organizations uh then you know they have club fairs they have different events and i help them decorating like trifles uh doing oh, wow. all of that <laughs> yeah it, it's really fun uh, so when I was in the States, I found out that people use planners to like planning stuff. 
and say, oh, they decorated their stuff in planners. It's really nice. So I really love that. After I graduated college, I moved back to Vietnam for work. Oh, okay. They don't sell, they didn't sell planners in Vietnam. I was so upset. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I was so, so upset. So uh, I just like looking online for like alternatives. Then I found something called bullet journal. So in, in bullet journal, people are using brush pens and calligraphy to decorate their own planners. And I was so interested in that. And I, uh, it, that's where my part for calligraphy started, like getting serious. So I mm -hmm. bought a lot of brush pens, different colors you can think of, and start decorating my notebook nice and neat. And uh, brush pen is not like a like pencil or fountain pen. You need to have a technique to write it to make it like look the thick stroke and a thin stroke. So I started learning that to get to uh, my handwriting like nice and neat. Uh, that and and then around like 2019, I got engaged, and then I like, started looking for like wedding, uh, planning and all of that jazz. And the thing that mm -hmm. caught my eye is all of the, the writing that people did, envelope, table number, the place card. I was like, these don't look amazing. Like, how can I do that? Uh -huh. So I dig, I dig a little deeper and figure out that. They did that uh, using a pointed pen, which is like you, a pointed pen is um, you have a pen holder and then you have a separate nib and then you dip it in a, an inkwell. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's called pointed pen calligraphy and they have like so many style. They have modern calligraphy, they have copper plate, and I'm just like overwhelmed with like everything about it. I was like, I want to able to write that i want to be able to do that for my wedding and like i want to <laughs> do that for everybody so i started learning like pointed pen calligraphy so, and then it just stuck with me ever since um when you first started your um when you first started learning about calligraphy was there like a particular style that stood out from you, maybe from like a book that you saw when you were a child. I know a lot of books sometimes are um, like decorated in like old English style mm -hmm. calligraphy. Was that maybe a factor? Or do you remember? Um... Uh, I don't think so. Um, Because calligraphy came to me as like, I was forced to do it in school back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like I had a choice learning, you know, cursives and like nice and neat. So it just like engraved in my brain that like my handwriting nice and pretty. And then mm -hmm. I see all my friends with like better handwriting than me. And I was just like, nope, I don't accept that. I have to be have like a better handwriting. So I'll keep practicing and getting better. <laughs> How much would you practice? A lot. A lot. Was... Because um, it's not the letters but you need to start from like every single stroke uh the mm -hmm. way you do up stroke you go up is different than the way you go down and then with like point to pen calligraphy it has to have a certain height and then it in a specific angle to make it look nice so for copper plate which is the one that i'm uh currently into uh like the the height of the word usually is around five millimeter but the angle is 55. So everywhere oh. has to like go slanted that particular angle in order for it to look nice and unified. Would you say that's your favorite style or you've developed your own style from that? For now, yeah, as a, as this moment, that is my favorite style. Uh, it How many styles are there? Hmm? Excuse oh. me. Sorry, no, go ahead. Uh, I say copper plate is uh is a very old script. It's come from like ancient. So so many people have developed and learned about it. And for me I think it's just very elegant and the way it's written is really nice to look at. So that's I really enjoy doing it right now. How could people like distinguish that in like letters or books that it was um uh, there are certain rules and different styles of writing. Uh, for example, as I said, 
copper plate, uh, you write the word in like 55 degree angle with like a, uh, the height of the word. And uh, the modern calligraphy is a little more freestyle. Okay. So you don't have to be every word, don't have to be at the same height. So you can bounce up and down and uh, like that. Uh, there are other type of calligraphy, but I haven't like got into it. Like Spence Spencerian is another one, but mm -hmm. their stroke is a little thinner in my opinion. But I haven't like digged out. When it comes, obviously, the type of instrument you use, it affects how you go about your calligraphy. Yeah. Um, is there like, let's say for modern do you use do you have to use a specific instrument for each of these or you could use any type of writing utensil uh for modern and copper plate calligraphy the the tools are pretty much the same it's just the way that your hand works would be different uh so what people usually do as i say is a pointed pen mm -hmm. uh it's have a, a pen holder oh i have one okay uh so this is a pen holder mm -hmm. and then you have a nib to go with it so basically imagine your pen this is what you hold to write but it doesn't have a, the nib the instrument to write it with so oh. the different is in the different types of nibs as well so we have this one this one oh, is okay. a G. this one is a browse so there are like so many different types of nibs. So have... for those listening, it, it, they they look like what you would think of pointed pen, but there's small details to every single one of them that makes yeah. them different. Um, and then how it works is that the the part that holds these is made of plastic or is it made of iron or what is it? The part that holds the pen is is a flange. It's it's made out of metal. Okay, it's like a little holder, and then yeah. the actual handle is uh, is that made of plastic or is that also like metal? Uh, this one it can made out of plastic. I have one that made out of uh, actually all of mine are made out of plastic, but people mm -hmm. um made out of wood as well, mm -hmm. and there are people that made out of like light metal. So it depends on like the um the creator of the pen, mm -hmm. how they want to create it. How expensive can these instruments get? Mm, it could go to, I saw pens that could reach to like the 300, 200, 300 range. Wow. For a uh, <laughs> pen holder. Wow. And that like really nice details. Um, you can imagine like how in Harry Potter looks like. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that, like that. <laughs> that's that's what the pen holder that she's describing. It literally looks like a Harry Potter wand flipped around, yeah. and that's what you use. The thicker part is what you use to write with. Um, that's so cool. Uh, and then does the ink affect the calligraphy style, or um, is there different types of variations of ink? Uh, yes, for calligraphy ink. It's different than uh, the fountain pen ink. So when I first started okay. calligraphy, I thought all oh, inks are the same. Uh, inks are inks, like what could be mm -hmm. different. But um, the ink for fountain pen is supposed to be like more um, liquidy, more diluted. Uh, for callig uh, ink for dip pen calligraphy, it needs to be a little more texture so it can stick in uh on the nib right here. And so the, the part. Yeah, so it needs to like have a little, it's thick enough to remain on the nib. So when you write, the ink can flow. Mm -hmm. uh, so usually when you buy ink for this, uh, you need to find like a, the ink that say for calligraphy, like calligraphy ink. Okay. Or sometimes people use a watercolor. That's a oh, really? alternative because for watercolor, you can mix the water. Uh, to the right consistency so it's not too watery for the uh, calligraphy so um, 
you've probably worked on different projects. What is the typical, um, I guess, use that you've seen? That or what's the most the most temp, uh, template you've used, like letters or maybe a page or posters? I don't. Um, for calligraphy, it appears the most nowadays is in wedding industry. So for like envelope, place card, table card, uh, what's the table numbers, all kind of mm -hmm. that. That's uh, where I do a lot of like writing about that. Uh, sometimes I like different kind of quotes. You know, when you see your favorite quote and like something that just mm -hmm. struck out to you and you want to frame it and you can write mm -hmm. it correctly. So sometimes I do that too. Is that like artwork kind of deal? Like instead, like you frame like a painting. Yeah, it's kind of artwork. Oh. So my okay. friend used to like tell me that calligraphy is like you drawing letters instead of like writing letters. I like that. I like that yeah. a lot. <laughs> um. So you said the wedding industry a lot. So, or, let's say, a three hundred invite, mm -hmm. um, wedding. You are literally gonna write the three hundred letters. Wow. <laughs> three hundred envelope, three hundred place card, all that. <laughs> oh my god. Um I guess and for like weddings specifically, I'd say you know, we all know how picky people are when it comes to their weddings. Yeah. Is do people get picky with your with your calligraphy? Like they're like, uh, can you like change that stroke here and there or or how do you like how would someone deal well, with that? Not change their stroke but particularly like color wise like they want it mm -hmm. to match with the color like theme colors uh mm -hmm. sometimes people have a specific idea of what like the wedding looks like oh i want more of like um flourishing my words get more like fancy letters or they just want something nice and simple so it depends on the reference but most like i think about the colors is a lot that I've well, have have you done like what is like a crazy amount that you've done before that you were like this was probably like, the biggest job well i haven't done any like crazy crazy job yet <laughs> mm. <laughs> especially yeah. right now with all this event uh cancellation and stuff yeah um i just moved back to the state and everything like easy mm -hmm. crazy so placement cards, wedding invitation. When it comes to the messages, uh, I guess that's something also that would be included, like writing the, the entire invitation, or would it be just the no, just the name or the, the uh, name. envelope address? That's enough work <laughs> for you already. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, has there been like uh any? I guess when people think of your job, well, I can just do it on like Illustrator or like Photoshop or, you know, InDesign. But w can you describe what you say that it's more of a personal touch when it comes compared to someone just typing out your name? Yeah, because like when you receive something that personally written by a person, it's different than oh, you type in a machine for like a second and you come out with a name. And when this you write with like handwriting, it's it's totally different. Like the way the ink flow and then it doesn't have uh but how can I say this? Like when you printing it out, yeah, it looks consistent, it doesn't have that personal touch to it. It's like uh when I for example, when I buy you a card from Hallmark instead of like mm -hmm. I make you a card. That's totally different. Even though the Hallmark card may be better consistency, but mm -hmm. then the handmark, the handmade card will be the one that you remember. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure. Have you used this for your personal use as well? Right? Have you written like a letter before? And um, for yourself? yeah, I I I did. Uh. I wrote letters, but like, what for my husband's birthday? I made a card for him because of quarantine, oh. 
and I could not go out. Back <laughs> in February, so when the whole quarantine just started, <clears throat> so yeah, I made a handmade card for him for his birthday. Uh, a few handmade cards here and there for my friends. And Is that did they really enjoy? It. Do your friends ask you for a favor most of the time? Like, hey, can you write this in your own handwriting <laughs> instead of theirs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm willing to do it, like something small, and I can do it, mm-hmm. like. Nice and quick, and then yeah, I'll definitely do. It. When it comes to like um, the business side that you were talking about, uh, aside from the wedding, uh, what other projects uh, would can people come to your um, business for? Uh, like for other projects, uh, I can do like uh, engraving, like bottle engraving. Oh, so wow. with the pool, you know how like um one market that I'm like striving to get at is for real estate, and when they sell a, a house and they give like a wine bottle to the new homeowners, and you can engrave like oh congratulations homeowner, it just like have a personal. Oh touch wow! It. Yeah, it's like handwriting, but with like a, a tool, mm-hmm. with an engraver tool. So that is one uh, aspect that I'm gonna work towards next year hopefully that's a really cool idea to have a wine bottle with you i guess anything with a label pretty much is pretty can much. Be your yeah, canvas. Anything made out of glass i can engrave it wow <laughs> yeah um, um so like a like, let's say like a like a plaque or a glass award you can also do something like that yeah you can do that oh. or even like perfume um People do, like, in the past, not right now, but they do live calligraphy at different stores. So they will have a table over there with their pens or their engra- engraver. And then whatever um, the customer buys from the store, you can have a personal touch right there, engrave their name or whatever, whoever name that they want to give it to. So it's uh, another way to attract customer to that particular store. So that's, that is- uh, yeah, that's another thing, live uh, calligraphy. Uh, cards are another one, another big one for calligraphers. Uh, so we design like different greeting cards for like seasonal cards. Uh, Christmas is coming, so a lot of people design their own design for cards and mm-hmm. uh, have it on sale. Uh, there's a lot that you can do. Um, for different like small businesses, people can write on the wall the menus or like you know the chalkboard <gasps> outside. Oh wow! Yeah, that we can do like handwriting on those as well. So there's a lot that calligraphers can do, like beside a wedding. I've seen uh, online where there's uh, sometimes a business will pay someone to do calligraphy on like their window, like the yeah. display window. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, this, so when doing this on glass, does that affect your style or is it still the same process? Uh, it would be a little different. Uh, the tools would be different. We would use most likely a uh, paint pen, uh, mm-hmm. like the Sharpie, Sharpie, like the big one. And the style that we use is pretty much this, either similar or different, depends on how uh, they want their design to be. Uh, but we're mm-hmm. not going to use like this pointed pen for a whole class, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so the way we do it is mostly is uh it's called faux calligraphy. Okay. Uh, it's like uh, that's what I did like back in grade school. The faux calligraphy mm-hmm. is to write just like with a normal pen or pencil, and then with whatever stroke that need to like bold. Usually, it's a down stroke. Then you just like add the thickness to it and make it look nice. Uh, when we go back to when you went back to Vietnam and you lost your and there was no planners in yeah the, I was so cool. okay. <laughs> <laughs> was it a big adjustment to go into uh, uh using like because I know that's become a very popular business um uh dot journals and how popular they've become for people to use so. You had to adjust to those, right? Bullet journal, sorry. Yes. 
was it a very big difference from um, using those? I know because there's no line in the bottom. How this work? It's basically a grid. Imagine a grid without lines, um, uh, and then you put at any every angle you have a dot. Yeah. That's how bullet journals work. Yeah. Did that change your style? Did you have to adjust to it, or pretty much was the same thing? No, it's pretty much the same. Like dot grid, the dot grid book mm -hmm. is actually like here for me. Uh, oh, really? To do calligraphy and to write, and it actually looks better on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't like crowd the page, you know. When you write something, you want your word to pop on it, and just the mm -hmm. little tiny dots, just like in the background of it, and it doesn't like overcrowd the whole page. So I really like the dot grid more than like the regular one. W would that become something where you could actually teach people? calligraphy for their bullet oh, yeah. journals oh yes. really uh that uh, calligraphy is a skill and uh, i have a lot of friends that doing workshop doing calligraphy class um they do uh, online like team building you know when you go uh they're different like painting with a twist kind of thing you go over there mm -hmm. and, uh they teach you like step by step how to paint we can do the same thing with calligraphy. We can provide like materials and it can show you like how to write each work. That's so cool. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of my friend like is doing that for like corporate and you can have like a workshop that you have people sign up and learn like the basic calligraphy. Yeah, that's just totally like, doable. That is so cool. I remember when I was in elementary school, I was also being taught cursive. Cursive was very important back then. Yeah. But then uh, people have just moved to plain old yeah. standard, yeah. right? Um, do you think uh, calligraphy is becoming more popular? Or do you think it's about the same? Or do you think, unfortunately, it's on the downturn? I would think it's a, a little popular, I guess, with like Instagram. Nice flex. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh... I think it never died out. People just don't, uh, like, they haven't found unity for it yet. Because when I uh, started learning calligraphy, I found out, like, there are so, so many people who are also doing calligraphy as well. There's so mm. many people who are interested in doing this, and then they want to learn. And there's a whole big community of calligraphers, like, both in the States and, like, all over the world. Wow. And like not only like calligraphy is a little big part in like different cultures like China or Japan that you So it's just diff they call it different it's still like the art of writing. Calligraphy. Mm -hmm. So it's still there. It's always been there. But people like focusing on digital work right now a lot more. But mm -hmm. there will be there still always be like a big community to go with. Or. where there there will always be a place for it when it comes to the world uh you mentioned how some cultures calligraphy is very important is there a particular uh countries that you've seen where their calligraphy is like very impressive though like like you mentioned japan and china uh, yeah. vietnam <laughs> vietnam yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, can you talk totally about it that I'm doing is Western calligraphy, like oh. all the popular and modern calligraphy, but the Vietnamese calligraphy is totally different. Uh, they use like a big brush to use it. It's just like the one in China, and mm -hmm. I can. Like, you can't do it. Yeah, I can. <laughs> uh, so you were saying it's a big brush. About how big would you say it is? But that depends on like the the piece of paper you're doing. Oh, so, okay. Hmm, I'd say the brush would be around two or three inches, like not the holder, but like the, the brush. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's a pretty big point. Like a pretty yeah. big brush. <laughs> yeah, for like big projects, it can go depend. But if mm -hmm. you like search for Vietnamese calligraphy, you will see it just looks totally different. Would you say Western calligraphy is probably more popular among the community or uh, just people just have their own styles? I think it's, yeah, Western calligraphy is more popular but because first it's easier 
not I wouldn't say easier, but like it's more accessible. Everybody mm. learns English. Everybody knows <laughs> nowadays. So they have a lot more resources to learn and understand Western mm-hmm. calligraphy, and all the tools are actually not hard to get. Um, okay. Like you don't need to buy a two hundred, three hundred pen holder. You can buy one for cheap in like ten dollars. Fine. Oh, and wow. the nib like a dollar or like that water uh the ink is as well you don't need to buy like super fancy ink i bought my water palette from michael for like six dollars for like 12 colors <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, it's really accessible so it's more popular you would say like there's the, the barrier of entry is not that high if people would like to get into calligraphy yeah. Would you recommend like those events like you were saying, or would you say like maybe a YouTube there's YouTube videos maybe for this or Oh there are YouTube videos. There are a lot of YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. but if you have a chance to attend like a live calligraphy or somebody personally teaching it, then I would totally recommend because it's not about just the stroke up and down, it's about how you hold your pen. How mm-hmm. your posture uh, gonna be, and like the way you move it, like you cannot write with your wrist. You should write with your arm. So you okay. Move can you ex- can you explain more of that, like the position and all that, and going writing with so, your like, arm? Yeah, so when you write, it just like sit up straight, and okay. because of the paper, um, it's like at an angle. So I usually mm-hmm. like tilt it myself, and I like the angle. Of, to match the paper. Yeah, in the in the direction of the paper. So for the pointed pen, mm-hmm. for example, this this is my paper, and this is the angle. The pointed pen, like the, I have to hold it, and this whole pen has to be the 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 angle of what I'm writing. So the point of the pen is about at a exact like you say well, 55, fifty five, yeah, fifty five degree angle yeah. from the pen. At all times, and then you don't write with your wrist. Can you explain that? So not writing with your wrist, but writing it's with your arm. Not recommended to write with your your wrist. Uh, if the word is too small, you mm-hmm. can do that. But if it's usually about like three millimeters, it's like just three. Mi- it'll know. be fine. People can convert. Yeah. It <laughs> so if you write like a big letter. Then you should mm-hmm. write with your whole arm, your like whole arm mm-hmm. movement, because the mm-hmm. word will flow a lot better. And you can have more movement with your whole arm compared to the wrist. You can only like. Okay, so it's because you want a, a larger stroke. It, you would be use that with using your whole entire arm, and then yeah. you mention your posture as well. I guess is that's to get the right angle of the yeah, pen at all right time. Angle. And you want the florist to make it like fancy and then that's Uh when you use the arm to make it like nice that is so interesting how like how you sit affects the way you stroke yeah in calligraphy yeah i would have thought like you know it's more free but it looks like it's a very it's just it's a a lot of rules apply to calligraphy because if you want it to look a certain way you have to do like certain rules for it what would be another rule that you think most people wouldn't imagine? Uh, another rule is it's, it's a lot, but like when it comes natural to you, you cannot think of it anymore as a rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's just muscle memory. Yeah, it's, it's memory. Like I do this. Is it considered rules or not? <laughs> <laughs> also like when you write you always lift your pen at the upstroke and okay. you put pressure at the downstroke so always. you lift so, so you don't touch when no you're pressure. up no, no pressure, pressure when you write up okay. but put pressure when you write down oh okay so for example the letter I M mm-hmm. M so when you write up Touch it really light, but when you curve down, you put you apply pressure to the pen to make the mm-hmm. ink flow more, and it get a thicker stroke. 
Mm-hmm. And then you go up again into a light, no pressure, and then go down, you apply pressure to it. Kind of. When, when you're doing such precise strokes like that, what is going on in your mind? Are you thinking about the stroke? Are you thinking about the message? What's usually... Don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up. <laughs> 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 How so? I guess like it's 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 a hobby where you, mistakes hurt. I guess right because you would have to start yeah, over. It, it's once you make a mistake, it's really hard to fix it. Oh no! Because <laughs> it's ink on paper. <laughs> it's so permanent. You can fix it. It like with uh, well, how do you erase? You can't like this wipe how you wipe it but then when you rewrite on it it it's not gonna mix the ink with the paper well or mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you like mess up lightly there's like that chance you can fix it but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um... usually i just like calming my mind when i write so i don't like pressure myself much <laughs> is there like, if I put a lot of pressure, I know I'm going to mess up. So I'm just like, okay, just relax and focus. Do you prefer silence or do you like music in the background when you're... Oh, I always have Oh, yeah, I have music. <laughs> Is there a particular genre of music that you listen to while you... Uh, Maybe like more songs? I attend a, uh, a class about like history of poker play. And the teacher, he's like a master. He was like, yeah, <laughs> always listen to music when you practice and usually it's like one song on repeat so it creates a rhythm when you write oh. it's like the rhythm of the stroke is the, re- the rhythm of your music and mm-hmm. uh, just find something like speak to the word I guess. it's usually it's more like orchestra and mm-hmm. calming kind of music and have like soothing re- rhythm I need mm-hmm. to start doing that because I've been listening to like Beat and Rap. That's what I've been listening to for the past like few months. <laughs> so I was like, probably that's why my work is just like all over the place right now. <laughs> that is hilarious. Vietnamese rap while you create I know, these like, beautiful letters. And again, so like, intricate and i was just like rapping blasting in the back like, I, I bet you i guess you go with the beat of the rap like a zero yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> um so you were talking about how there's classes and stuff um i guess it's it's like art you know this is it's, um, that's what i'm getting it's it's a form of art that uh, people are learning and um this could be, I guess, combined with other art. Let's say someone paints something. I could see that you could, maybe they want some particular words on top of that, and they would find someone like you, right? Yeah, totally. Um, this a lot of people combine calligraphy with watercolor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they draw like watercolor, and then they have some writing on top or below, and we can totally do that. So calligraphy is a type of art. That's I, I think it's so cool. And I, these type of services, I would say, because of all this time that you put into it, it's not cheap, correct? <laughs> uh, what would you say? Like, can you give some prize opinions? Uh, somebody once told me, like, calligraphy service is a luxury. It's I nice bet. to have, but you don't necessarily need it. Like, you can write your own envelope. You can print your own envelope. You don't need people to write like nice and fancy. So mm-hmm. it's it's a look a luxury service. Um so it can, can vary. So um for like an a writing envelope, mm-hmm. outside envelope, uh for a wedding, it could range from like four dollars per card. Uh place card, like uh to put on the, the plate for the wedding, it could go range from like a dollar to one fifty. Depends on what they and this, want, and this slowly adds up. Well, because yeah, they're... it totally adds up. Imagine you have like three hundred guests, 
times four. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so like people are like, oh, a dollar, a card, I could do that, and then suddenly, yeah, <laughs> suddenly you become three dollars, three hundred dollars just for the place card, and they were like, mm-hmm. nah, I can write myself. <laughs> <laughs> um. So like you were mentioning about that wine idea that you have. Let's oh, yeah. say for that something like that. What would you uh, guesstimate? Uh, for that, it would depend on how many letters they want. And would okay. it be like um, a simple word or like they want flourishing, they want something fancy. So it mm-hmm. could vary from, it could be from $50. Well, no, that's, that that include the bottle of price, so it depends on what kind of bottle. They oh, have. okay. You get to pick the bottle. You get no, to pick the, guest the bottle. Can, the guests can can pick the bottle. That's mm-hmm. <laughs> so it can go twelve, twenty five dollars, fifty dollars. So it depends. Okay, like so how two, complicated it is. So two things there. You mentioned letters. So you literally, depending on the amount of letters, you can you can come up with a charge. So like, like my name, no way. It, basically, that's how it comes to it. Oh, it's so like time. That bottle take me like an hour to do, mm-hmm. or that bottle would take me like thirty minutes. Then the price. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so okay. All, like how long? So like my name is only N O E. It's only three letters. So I'll <laughs> 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 take you like five minutes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that would be. I I'd say ten. <laughs> Make it look um, nice sketching it out. <laughs> and then another thing you mentioned was flourishing. Uh or uh, can you explain that a little? Yeah. Can you explain that uh, a little more? So flourishing is uh a decorative details when it comes to lettering. Mm-hmm. So when you write something, you write it um normally. And then mm-hmm. at the end of the word you add a big loop or you add like a drawing, a line of going up and oh, down, and okay. make it look fancier. It's called flourishing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, is there a particular like flourishing that goes with a, a particular? Would I? Can I call this a font, or is that in term incorrect with this? Not a font. <laughs> a it's font like a for computers, style. right? <laughs> a style. Okay. Yeah. Um, there we go. Did not. <laughs> Don't go to a calligrapher and then, oh, can you do this in this font? And they're going to slap you. They're like, I'm not a computer. <laughs> exactly. Because font you seem for like computer life. So like, what style do you want? <laughs> okay. Uh, is there any particular flourishings that are specific to a style? No. So flourishing is more or less your creative. Uh, okay. My like how you want it. So there's no particular little way to do flourishing you can do mm-hmm. simple you can do like super extra so it depends on how you're comfortable with it or like how extra your client wants. and it's just oh, okay. a free flow of thing what are you feeling how to flourish? oh okay <laughs> um would you say that uh when working with clients you would have a lot of people who would be like ah i don't like it do it again or most people are pretty yeah, yeah. easy yeah yeah, I'll be, I will be. I know I'm one of those. Because <laughs> 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 when I want something, I don't, I don't like it. Add it, like take it out. Because something, like sometimes I feel like, oh, it's that nice. We have a little tiny stroke right here, go like that. But then people look at it and it's like, no, I want it plain and simple. You can take it out. Or like, this is too much for me. I want something like, it's a little bit of flourish, but it can be elegant. So it depends mm-hmm. on like that. It's just a decorative touch. So when you would, let's say, for just the entire project, um, do you uh, do more than one of that project to show that showcase the different styles you could go for, or you just redo it every single time? Oh no, we'll I would create like a few like examples in the beginning, so okay. we can discuss like what style like mm-hmm. they want, and then. What are they expecting before we like dig down into the main project? Because it would okay. be annoying if I create everything and then they want to change it. That'd be like mm-hmm. a really pain to do. 
Uh, I I noticed that you do put a lot of pressure on yourself when it comes to uh to your projects. Is, is would you say that help that mentality is what it helps you? You know, I've seen your work. I saw the Instagram account. That how nice your so I guess like the is it the discipline that helps you? Uh I say yes and no because I want hmm. people to feel what my friend feels back in the day. As I told you in the beginning, like uh, when I give them uh, something nice and you can mm -hmm. see their face lit up. Like middle school kids, high school kids, like we don't have a lot of offers. So people take the time to write for you. Your mm -hmm. name is nice, beautiful. So I want people to have that feeling or like whoever they give it to will have that feeling. So I, I, I put myself to that standard. So it put me to the point like, okay, I want to create something nice and professional, but it's also create like a lot of stress because, you know, you need to make it like look nice. And stuff. <laughs> um, would you say you still have, you, you're pretty much at a level where you're content with your style or would you like to uh, learn more? Oh, I am nowhere near. <laughs> The level <laughs> that I want to be. Uh, so I thought about handwriting was nice, to be honest. But then when I look at like when I attend different cl classes and you know, like hear different stories, how people like writing, and it just like I am just just scratch the surface. There's a lot more that I wanted to, to do. Like um, once that I want to learn, I mentioned earlier, it's Spens Spencerian. That's another way that I want to like touch base with. So there's a lot more in calligraphy that I want to expand to. But right now I'm focusing on like mastering what I'm good at right now. Mm -hmm. Then I'm moving on to the next project. Um, it's so crazy to me that there's this whole little world of calligraphy. There's this whole community dedicated yeah. to this art and it's exciting to that there's class. I want to take a class now. I really want to go take a class. I have horrible <laughs> handwriting. I'll tell you, like, I have horrible handwriting. Do you think I have yeah. any hope? <laughs> oh, everybody has hope because handwriting is not hand lettering. A lot of people have horrible handwriting. <laughs> As okay. a hand lettering is, let's say earlier, it's the drawing of, of letters. It's not the writing of letters. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that's how my friend described it to me. And I said, it's like completely correct. Because when I hand my handwriting, when it's not like the dead writing, it's so bad. You cannot read it. <laughs> <laughs> and like doing hand lettering because there are certain rules. And when you follow those rules, you will get it. It's not that hard. Hand lettering. So that's like, you're not writing the letter A, but you're, you're drawing yeah. a letter A. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that is so cool. Um. And so there's classes out there. There's a YouTube video. Is is there like um, like an influence or a particular artist or calligrapher, sorry, that you think, oh, he's like a rock star that I follow when it comes to the calligraphy world? A lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, there's a calligrapher master in Vietnam that he actually teach all over the world and in the state. Uh, his name is Huang, and he's on Instagram. Uh, there is Annie, Annie, yeah, wait, no, that's her Instagram name, Nina Chan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. her way, I'm <laughs> She's <laughs> all, like, her handwriting is really good. Um, there's another lady, like, uh, Susan Cunningham. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people with just, like, phenomenal handwriting, and when I look back at mine, I was like, yeah, mine's <laughs> <laughs> well i bet you get there i guess like it's one of those things how people say that humans can get good at anything once they practice it so much and nowadays people share interest because of the internet so mm -hmm. i guess particularly with instagram you would say that it would help this hobby a lot because people can you don't have to post like an artist. You don't post about yourself, but you could post about your calligraphy. Yeah. Yeah, Instagram um, definitely helps. Because calligraphy is the art that you look at, that you understand. You don't 
listen, you don't do anything. You have to look <laughs> know what it is. So the Instagram platform, that's where you post it there so people can see it. And mm-hmm. that I think that's one of the big contributors for like the community for the liquor first to expand. I I think this is really nice. And uh I wanna thank you for being on the show. It's really vital. But I'm really. I would really like to attend one of these calligraphy classes. I think it would be really cool. Yeah, and, it'd be fun uh, to do. It's a team bonding experience. If you have friends, you can like have a like a group together and learn how to write. It's really like calming. So, can you tell us more about your business uh, and what uh, how people can contact you or projects that you would be open to doing? So my business is still in the making right now. Uh, I will launch it in two weeks. Uh, the Letter Holly Calligraphy, you can find me at uh, letterhollycalligraphy.com or uh, on my Instagram name with the same name, Letter Holly Calligraphy. Uh, so my business right now, I'm focusing on wedding calligraphy. So wedding signage, as I say, envelopes, place card, table number, kind of like that. Uh, I also do custom calligraphy uh, if you want. so. Your anniversary, you want to rewrite your vows, or uh, you want to write like a favorite poem. You have a lullaby you want to give your kids. Anything that is like writing that you want to frame nicely, that I can do that. I also do uh, engraving, like I told you before. Um, with uh, the bottle engraving, you can give it to new homeowners, uh, grad- like college graduates. You know when the the events you mm-hmm. want to engrave it on it nicely um and then when the time permit uh, i uh, will do the live calligraphy as well so wow. go to different like stores and sit there and hope people will come and talk to me <laughs> have, have you thought about streaming your like a calligraphy session i think like that would uh, be pretty cool i have a plan to um uh, do like calligraphy workshop in the future. Oh, okay. So as I say, uh, like we can do virtual workshop on Zoom. Mm-hmm. I'll sit here and I'll uh, show you the show. Uh, if this whole COVID thing lifts up, maybe do like in person class. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so there might be a YouTube channel in the future. I don't know yet. <laughs> Okay, but uh, there, there's a lot of like plans in the making right now. <laughs> this is, has been such a once again such an interesting topic to talk about. An interesting person with an interesting hobby that <laughs> there's way more to it than what people think there really is. Um, so I want to thank you so much. Uh, and if you could shout out your stuff once again, so people remember. Letter Holly Calligraphy, everybody. <laughs> it's amazing it it looks it's such gorgeous work uh i'll make sure to post that um i want to thank you so much for being on the show wendy this was so cool i i, I keep saying it because it's just something that blow my mind um and i want to thank you <laughs> and i want to thank you no problem uh uh, thank you, the listener, uh, for listening, tuning in to this episode of Your Wave with No Way. And just a reminder, this episode is available on all major streaming platforms for podcasts. That includes Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. As well as the video version of this episode will be available on YouTube. So you you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Yo Soy No Way No Way. Uh, and I do stream on Twitch. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, although I haven't been too consistent recently, but I'll try so you guys can talk to me about this episode or any of the past episodes that you guys have listened to. Once again, my name is Noe, and this has been Wendy's Way. Thank you. Thank you.